CC ball action can be found under the simulation category and when you apply it to a layer, it adopts the colors from that layer and generates a grid of shaded spheres. By default, they're sized to where they all kind of run into each other and it looks a lot more like a mosaic, but if we go to the ball size property and turn it down, you can see that each cell has a shaded sphere colored based on the corresponding pixels of the image. We can also change the grid spacing to make these spheres larger or smaller, and this is a really great way to simulate a giant screen that you might see at a sports stadium. I'm gonna make that grid a little bit larger so we can see those spheres nice and large, and then we'll walk through some of these other settings. The very first property is scatter, and it's set to zero by default, but if I increase it, then you can see that it literally is just scattering all of these spheres. You'll notice each one of those spheres still contains the pixels based on the unscattered version of the image, so this can be used as a way to transition in or out of the image. If you turned your grid spacing way down and turned the ball size up, maybe even keyframe them, you could easily use this effect to create that transition from all these particles into the solid image. The next property is rotation axis, and that's linked to the rotation value down here. So first, let's just increase the rotation, and you'll see that this effect is 3D. As soon as I get to the 90 degree angle, you can see that these spheres actually have depth to them instead of just being a flat layer. Now turning this layer 3D and rotating the layer will not show that depth. It has to be done within the controls of the effect itself, but it does a pretty good job at it. Now that that's rotated, we could change the axis that it is rotated on. Unfortunately, it can only be rotated on one axis, but the nice thing about this effect is that it responds to 3D cameras, and the way that you can know that is this little icon right here, the 3D cube, next to the title, that lets you know that it interacts with 3D objects. So if I were to make a new camera, click OK, and then switch to my orbit tool and rotate around, you can see that it actually is responding to that 3D movement. All right, I'm gonna get rid of that camera and reset that back down to zero, and then we'll move on to twist property. It's currently set to X axis, but if I change the twist angle, you can see it's kind of curling up this grid of spheres on that X axis. And if I change it to say the Y axis, then it'll twist that direction. And we have a whole lot of options in here. If we reduce center Y, then it's gonna twist it based on the center of the layer. And you can even base it on the color channels, like the green channel here. If I turn this down, then the green channel is going to be twisted at a different rate than everything else. And then finally, we have instability state, which if I reset this all, turn up the scatter, and then come down to instability state, you can see that it kind of just vibrates all of these around. Let's make that grid size a little bigger again, change the ball size down, and with that scattering up, it just wiggles all of those particles around and gives you a way to animate all of those spheres randomly at once. And this effect is also based on the size of the layer it's applied to but it respects masks. So if I were to add a mask to this layer, using the rectangle tool, just double click on it to add a mask the size of the layer, and then I scale it down, hold down control to scale this proportionally down to say the middle of the layer, then I'll just reset the effect really quick. I'm left with spheres that are made up just within that mask, but if I zoom in close, you can see they're not getting cut off by the mask, this effect is just respecting the pixels that are being covered up by the mask and then generating the spheres on top of it. So if I turn the grid spacing way up again and I turn these spheres down so we can see the edges and then change the twist angle to be pretty extreme, we can create something that looks a little bit like a DNA strand. And obviously this is placed on top of a photo, but you could make this a solid layer or a pre-comp so that you can completely control what the colors of this DNA looks like. But that is the CC ball action effect. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you want to support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.